So there are a lot of comments about my criticism of seed oils. I'm talking about omega-6 fatty acid rich oils. And here we can talk about soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, and so on. So these are uh, produced in chemical factories, obviously, because you can't just squeeze a soybean and get oil out of it, you know, as you could with an olive. And so these polyunsaturated fats are chemically made. There's sometimes extractants involved. Sometimes they use different mechanisms, but they usually have to deodorize them, bleach them, and so on. So once, so one thing is that there's a chemical process to make these, but they're also something that we didn't consume in these quantities um, in our evolutionary uh, development. So these are fairly new to us. They really came on in the early 1920s, 30s, 40s, and then became more prevalent in the 50s, 60s, and so on. And then we've increased our consumption of these oils um, really over the years. It's an exponential function. So then since the 80s, 90s, we've uh, consumed quite a bit. Actually, until the 1990s, McDonald's used beef tallow, which is a saturated fat for their French fries, and it tasted actually a bit better, I think. Uh, then they got a lot of pressure from the industry to switch to the healthy vegetable oils. They also call them vegetable oils, which of course, they got nothing to do with vegetables. But what's the controversy here? Because when you look at publications that say from the American Heart Association and at some of these big mainstream uh, uh, medical journals, they will still say, look, um, seed oils are good. These, you know, again, we're talking about these uh, omega-6 rich fats, omega-6 fats, because they do lower your total LDL cholesterol, your bad cholesterol, right? And that is true, they do. They do lower LDL cholesterol. There's no question about it. But I'm going to uh, <clears throat> post a paper on here, actually, that explores this a bit. And one thing we found is because, you know, this was a simplistic explanation, you know, and we just vilify LDL and less LDL is better. The less you have of this, the healthier you are. And that is something, again, that is uh, uh, a bit difficult to understand. Why have we developed as a species with something so evil in our bodies that we need to artificially lower it through the use of medications, right? Now, there is a paper I'm going to link that explores this a bit, and I don't want to be too technical here, but when you look at LDL cholesterol, LDL essentially is a particle, a, a, a carrying particle, like a bus if you want, that has different fats in it. And when we look at the LDL, the LDL is actually fine. We need it, you know, uh, it delivers cholesterol to our cell membranes, and we can use cholesterol to make hormones. These are actually useful molecules. But when they oxidize, when the, L, when the LDL particle becomes oxidized, it becomes dangerous and certainly can contribute to atherosclerosis. There's no question about it. But how does it oxidize? And it's usually in the presence of higher blood sugars, higher blood glucose levels, but also the part that oxidizes in this LDL particle, this has this mix of fats in there, is actually the omega-6 fat from seed oil. So the paper arguments, uh, the paper argues that actually the seed oils are the driver for atherosclerosis because they are the particle in the LDL that oxidizes. So again, you can read that and that's something that is difficult in um, even interventional studies to show. And why is that? Well, because the half-life of this omega-6 fat in our cells is about two years or longer sometimes. So when you do an interventional study and you put a group on a um, saturated fat diet and the other one on a seed oil diet and you compare them and you do this even for a few weeks or a few months, you're never going to reach the point where um, that initial stored omega-6 fat is really out of those cells. So I think it's not a very good comparison. It's a very difficult to really run a study like that, right? Now, uh, they've done some studies, but again, I think the merit of it or, or, or what came out of it was not very good. So because all of us growing up, at least in Western countries, especially in the United States, but also in Europe, have consumed seed oils in fairly high quantities since we were born. It's even baby formula when you read it. There's uh, canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, a lot of times is, is an additive in these uh, uh, baby formulas even. And so we get this when we're very young already, and it's in every fast food, of course. So every ultra processed foods, when you read at what oils are used, you're looking at soybean oil, canola oil, and so on. Um, so that already is something that should raise some flags. You know, we did not used to eat this stuff. We used to eat, um, you know, lard and uh, we had some olive oil and beef tallow and uh, we had butter, of course. And those are fats that are much more, you know, natural. They're mostly, most of saturated fats. There's also coconut oil. And uh, when you look at populations that consume high amounts of these, they do not have significant amount of heart disease, actually. So, um, the Minnesota coronary experiment was supposed to also show, this is another study I'm going to link, that um, eating a diet rich in saturated fat causes heart disease, but it could not prove that. 
they just showed that when people actually ate a seed oil rich diet, I think it was over the period of five years, um, overall mortality increased. But, um, you know, when, when we look at heart health, heart health did not change between the groups, right? So these are things we have to keep in mind. Said so that these oils are are very new, and we we haven't eaten them, um, you know, when we look back in our evolution until fairly recently. We're eating higher quantities now than we used to, and when we look at a correlation here, and of course it's correlational data, but again, keep in mind, they stay with us for many many years. Very difficult to look at other data or to do a study, an interventional study, because you would have to have a group that's been following a seed oil reduced or almost seed oil free diet for a period of over two years and then use that group compared to another group. It's difficult to do. No one really has done it in that in re respect. And I think having not having those data is very difficult to make any comparison really, right? Um, there's also um, a, a study that's been shown recently. They looked at data over a period of 17 years or 16 years for people following a ketogenic diet, which is very rich in saturated fats and does not have a lot of seed oils. You know, you, you can if you eat I think they're called this dirty keto. We eat some some fast food items as well. But they, uh, these people usually consume a saturated fat high diet, and it showed that not only did they have lower all uh, um, all cause mortality by about twenty four percent, but they had significantly lower um, heart disease. Right. So we're seeing that um, having people on these diets for a prolonged period of time it does not drive heart disease up, and this is what you know the American Heart Association and some of the uh, medical literature would would say it would cause and it does and and it does not and i think that's a very important thing to keep in mind so again from a simplistic point of view we've had not had these oils until until fairly recently we have a steady increase in heart disease over the last you know 80 years or so and we also have a similar increase in the consumption of these oils while our consumption of um, saturated fats was pretty stable right it hasn't shifted much so given that, you know, arguing that um, basically saturated fat is at the at the root of our increased level of heart disease doesn't make a lot of sense because we have not consumed more of it, right? It's been vilified. Again, even big chains like McDonald's have switched from saturated fats to these seed oils and we're getting sicker. We have more heart disease. Now, some people will argue, well, yeah, but we have less death from heart disease. And that's true because medicine has improved. You know, we have better ways to treat people. We have better ways to, to manage people when they're, uh, when they're sick, when they have heart disease, right? Um, also, when you think of um, life expectancy, our life expectancy may have actually increased now. When you look back in the early 1900s, you say, well, people died younger. True, many people did because of infections, for example, and medicine has advanced with great antibiotics. Again, we can treat things like heart disease, we can treat things like cancer, we can manage autoimmune disorders, so we have definitely gotten better. So our life expectancy went up, but our um, you know, overall sickness in the population with diseases ranging from diabetes to cancer to heart disease has increased tremendously. You look back to the early 1900s, it's very rare to find someone that died of a heart attack, right? Or very rare to find someone that died of cancer. And autoimmune disorders were also significantly low and allergies were lower. So a lot of people were, um, when they, if they got older, they were healthier. People died young from infections, from complications and all that. And childhood death was high. And then, of course, you know, uh, tuberculosis and other things. We're managing these things a lot better today. There's no question about it. But still arguing um, from these, you know, American Heart Association and some of these institutions, uh, or if you even look at the, uh, U uh, at the U.S. dietary guidelines, they're still pushing seed oils. Again, I think it's a big mistake to do that. I think we should go back to the nutrition as we had it about 150 years ago, but these seed oils did not exist, and go with simple foods. Now, I'm not advocating to guzzle any fat, also, I'm not advocating to gaza saturated fats. And that's one mistake I see in people following a ketogenic diet. Now, I did. I was on a ketogenic diet about um, about six years ago. So for about two years, I was on it. It was fantastic for me. I had parameters that improved greatly. I lost a lot of body fat, visceral fat that I had. I had early stages of diabetes, and they reversed. Uh, I got healthier, felt great. I mean, this made a big difference for me. So it's something that I did as a therapeutic implication, really, right? But some people go on a ketogenic diet and they think, oh, now I can just go wild and eat fat all day. And I don't think you really have to or you should. Um, also, I'm of the opinion that you can have a high or fairly high protein intake on a ketogenic diet, right? That's fine. The argument is, oh, well, there's gluconeogenesis where a protein is turned into sugar. Well, that's always the case. And it's not so much dependent on your consumption of protein. It doesn't, there's no correlation directly of saying, I eat more protein now, I have more blood sugar necessarily. 
we always have some processes in our body that need sugar. And even if you eat zero carbs, if you can manage that, because you know, think about this, even some plants have uh, carbs, right? Like greens have carbs, right? You gotta, you get some carbs in every day. But even if you limit it to really, really low amounts, you will still have enough uh, blood sugar to power things that say processes in, in your brain where you need it. And that's because the body can convert uh, anything pretty much to sugar. So you can make enough sugar as you need it. But uh, you don't have to reduce protein necessarily on a ketogenic diet, in, in my opinion, and you don't have to guzzle fats. And if you're eating a low-carb diet, which I'm following right now, I have a high-protein, low-carb diet, and I do eat fats. I eat saturated fats, but I'm not going crazy on it. And one reason for that is that fat has a lot of calories. It's nine calories per gram compared to four calories per gram for carbohydrates and proteins. So you don't want to go overboard if you want to be in a bit of a um, caloric deficit, at least, if you think that you still have a bit of body fat to lose. So this is just you know a short video just summarizing why I continue to state that you should not eat these artificially produced seed oils. If you've never seen how they're produced, look at a video how seed oils are made. Look at how canola oil is made. Look at how soybean oil is made. And again, these are factories. They're using chemicals to you know, extract it. Then they deodorize it. Then they bleach it. I mean, there's a lot of unnatural steps, first of all. Secondly, our ratio, when you go back to um, our ancestors, was closer to one to one on omega-3 to omega-6 fats. Now it's 20 to one omega-6 to omega-3, which is nuts. Um, and so the ratio has definitely shifted. Some people try to compensate by increasing omega-3 consumption, which I think is fine. I talked about fish oil. If you get a good fish oil, absolutely fine. That's a good oil to consume. But that shouldn't be our only step. We shouldn't change the ratio by just having more omega-3 fat. We should also decrease omega-6 fat. So this is, you know, again, um, something that I feel is important to uh, talk about to people because I'm interested in longevity. I'm interested in preventive health. And one of the aspects that I strongly um, support is lowering your omega-6 fats. I think it's something that is very good for you. And all my patients that have implemented this have noticed significant differences, but it does take time. You gotta be patient with it again. Uh, two years, half-life, so it takes a while for whatever you've stored in your body for this to come out and you know to uh, feel some of the benefits of lowering the omega-6 fats in your diet.